I'm glad to be back in Zambia uh, for a while. Um, I did implement uh, one of uh, the adolescent focus interventions covering Kenya and uh, Zambia. So being here again is a pleasure, uh, colleagues. Um, it's exciting. Um, there is a Kenyan saying, of course, in Kiswahili, I know there's a big audience of Kenyans. It says, Mwana akijinyelea paja halikatwi lafutua. So that essentially will uh, be my presentation around the G power and how the community role is significant in ensuring that the pregnant and breastfeeding adults and girls and young women actually receive the services that they need and that the support is there for them uh, from a case management approach. Next. Sorry, I actually thought uh, someone else was moving it. <laughs> all right, so um, the, as we all understand, the triple threat that faces the adolescents, adolescent girls and young women, revolves around high new HIV cases, the gender-based violence, as well as teenage pregnancy. For the Kenyan context, this is actually uh, something that is already um, a big problem and a national program is actually in place and a commitment by the government and other stakeholders in place to be able to address this. You can notice uh, from the figures there that there is very high contribution of new HIV incidences by the adults and girls. There are very high incidences of um, gender-based violence and equally that we are experiencing very high rates of teenage pregnancies. So therefore, at Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation, one of the interventions then that we are working on is to be able to um, respond to this commitment alongside other stakeholders in one of the counties in Kenya, which is Homa Bay, which is one of the counties with the high uh, cases or incidences. So the GPOW essentially is a layered um, intervention that addresses the socio-ecological environment of the adolescent, understands the adolescent, their needs, and then works with them to be able to address this. So there are community level interventions as well as facility level interventions. But for the focus of this conversation, I will center it around what we do in the uh, community. Of course, you know, um, we use a standard um, triple threat uh, screening, which is a screening for HIV, uh, teenage pregnancy, as well as GBV, alongside, of course, other services that would then be appropriate for them. And it focuses both in terms of the adolescents who are positive as well as who are negative. Then there is a very strong community leadership. In fact, in the county of interest, which is Homa Bay, the um, governor of the county has actually agreed to be the champion for the triple threat, taking leadership, forming a women leadership caucus that brings together all the women leaders in the um, uh, county to be able to help champion this cause. Um, similarly, we are also working with a multi-sectoral approach to be able to coordinate, especially the community uh, piece of this. So it is important for us to then look at um, what then was the challenge, what then did we uh, purpose to do, and what have we seen happening. So within the um, implementation period, we've been able to uh, basically um, on the challenge side, uh, a lot of that is already summarized for you and you can uh, look at that. But what we needed to note is that from the community level interventions, we're able to see a greater impact. And from that, we've been able to see early identification of pregnant uh, cases among the adults and girls and young women. Um, you know, around 39% of those girls who may not have been identified have actually been identified through that triple screening that we've also seen 
that there is therefore early and prompt linkage for the ANC and postnatal care services, including PMTCT for those who are positive, that we've also been able to see that when you take the approach and you support the community as well as a clinical piece of the intervention uh, through the 100% linkage, we are seeing that um, the initial entry for those girls who are coming into the program in, that we are meeting for the first time, there is of course a concern of about 1.5% uh, positivity. But when we take them through the process, um, especially with incidence prevention, uh, messaging, targeted messaging, and all the support, both at the facility and the community, that we are seeing very low uh, rates of seroconversion, less than 0.2%. Uh, and that we've been able to integrate social protection services to uh, support um, the other needs beyond health, as well as um, providing other services, including very impressive uptake of PrEP, which is actually also contributing to the prevention piece, both within the community and the facility. So, in terms of what we do within the community setting, is that there is the initial phase of the program that began with the community barrier assessment. What are some of those barriers that the adolescents face? What are some of those challenges that they face? And a lot of it has to do with um, you know, the household issues. When an adolescent girl gets pregnant, what happens? Majority of them are actually either sent away, uh, forced to get married to older men, or um, you know, forced to drop out of school and the like. So when we began by analyzing what those barriers were, then we are better equipped to be able to then see at the household level, what would be the best intervention? How do we sensitize the households, the brothers, the sisters, the mothers, the fathers, and, and every other uh, uh, person within the life of the adolescent to be able to take that into consideration? Then at the intervention level and at the enrollment, then we are doing the individual needs assessment beyond the health. And therefore, we are asking them, what are these other services that they may require? And you see that that contributes to the referral around, you know, the other social protection services that are being provided. And then working with the peer mentors, who are themselves adults and girls and young women, who are recruited through a community process. So we put the notice for calling out for peer mentors. The adults and girls and young women actually apply for the same positions within the community and within the facilities that we work with. And therefore, we are better able to identify the peers that are suited for uh, providing this service. We work closely with the Ministry of Education, especially because of the school readmission. We work, again, the adults and girls and young women who are pregnant know or, or will definitely lead you to other girls who they suspect could also be pregnant. So again, that, that uh, social uh, networking strategy works in terms of bringing in their friends and collaboration with other community pro social protection programs like the DREAMS and the Orphans and Vulnerable Children. The community health workers or the community health promoters are important uh, part of that uh, piece and we also engage with them to be able to help us with the community pregnancy mapping and support. Working with the schools is as important and continuous household visits to be able to provide the household uh, supportiveness. And generally, just being able to create um, awareness in the community so that um, the cases are best identified at the community at the earliest opportunity. And working with the national government administrative officers, especially when it comes to issues of gender-based violence. So broadly, you know, those are some of the results that I've already alluded to. But largely what we are saying is that in terms of the support, there is both for the HIV positive as well as the HIV negative adolescents, and we are able to take care of that. So in a snapshot, we are saying that there is increased HIV uh, testing, the knowledge of status. There is also the 99% skill delivery, and there is um, a 96% you know, uh, support and linkage for those who are under care, as well as um, increased uptake of other services, including uh, PrEP. 
Um, in terms of school, we know the protective services that the schools provide, and therefore we've also provided for how the reentry process is done and how that engagement works. Uh, finally, um, just a few testimonies from clients, adolescent girls and young women who've benefited from the service in terms of what they have benefited from. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.